Hello and welcome back. I'm Liam, CEO and co-founder of Zealandia Systems. This is episode two of our scale aircraft engine build. And as promised in this video, we're gonna make some chips. All right, so what part of the radial engine are we going to make today? How about we jump across onto the computer and we'll have a look. In this video, we are going to be machining some of the rocker pots. Now the rocker pots contain the valve assembly and kind of hide it uh, and contain all the oil that's required to lubricate those systems. So as you can see over here, that the rocker pots sit on top, one for the intake, one for the exhaust. So we'll come back and you can see here that we have the rocker arm inside here operating the mechanically stuff. Now you can see that the geometry is slightly different. This is so we can align the push rod things, the tubes, the push rod tubes and the push rods themselves a bit better. And you'll see here our manufacturing file. Now this is actually quite a small part and we didn't realize this like on the computer screen it actually looks ra rather big and then you start going well what is the tool that we need and you start going three mils too big um these are m2 holes so it's been quite a challenge we will be working with some 3d printed jigs so you can see here that we've got this one here this is our op2 jig this is so we can drill the stud for the rocker arm itself. Uh, we're just printing, actually, as we speak, we're printing the OP3 so that we can do the outside uh, of the pot. Now, the stock itself is only 25 by 25 by 50. It's, it's tiny. It's going to be, it's not going to be difficult, it's just going to be technical. So. We're going to have to use some clever work holding and with that we're going to use some Mighty Pite, um, pit balls and, and the Talon grips. Uh, that's all available through our ChipX website, chipx.co.nz. The link will be in the description. Now with the 3D printed files as well, we've fired up a GitHub repository. So we're putting all these files out there, we're just going to let everybody have them. Uh, so you can make your own engine, like this stuff's just too cool not to share. And with that, we're going to be using Chipex tooling and some Swift Carb stuff. So we have our single flute Chipex tool. I think we're going to do the majority of the roughing with this one. We have our 90 degree engraving tool. And yeah, if we get some time, I'm really wanting to try one of these Swift Carb three flute roughing mills so this has little um, chip breakers in it which will be really quite exciting we haven't used one of these on a router yet so looking forward to it right let's see some cam tool paths all right so let's have a look at the tool pathing and the camming we are going to be using fusion 360 with this one we haven't quite got our chipx parameters nailed for the cloud nc stuff so we're just working through that in the background uh, once we do have that available it will be available for everybody to download and use anyway um, but yeah in this one we are jumping across the computer we'll have a look so as a side note we are using fusion 360 this is free to download for a hobby it is slightly restricted uh, if you are in education the licensing is free for the full package which is fantastic now this is available uh, through autodesk directly and the link will be below in the description now it is a three-part uh, three operation parts. So the first operation, we're going to be just best practice, deck the material. Then we're going to drill the material out to uh, be an M2 thread. At these points here, we're going to do this first so that we've got some material keeping it nice and strong and it's not going to move and deflect the drill but or deflect the material as we do it. Uh, and that's going to then move on to some adaptive clearing, um, some, some contouring for the pocket. 
contouring out the back of the machine, uh, the, the part I should say. So this one here, uh, it will just be slotting away at the back to get it through. Then we need to bore out the valve port. This is also quite important as this is how we'll be locating it onto our second and third op fixtures, which Zane is printing at the moment. The outside will then be cut. I think this is one mil step over, uh, six mil depth of cut. Um, we're just going to kiss this into tolerance uh, as, we, as we go. Final finishing pass, bring that right in. Then we'll run some edge breaking. And yeah, another edge break. We can go from there. Op 2 is using this jig. He's got it upside down on this one, I think, but this jig here will be locating the part on its side, which will then allow us to. Oops, I've got it upside down. It wasn't Zane, it was me. Which will allow us to drill that hole for the rocker arm pivot. After that, we shall move on to our op 2, which I'm just looking for in here. It looks like it's this one, so let's turn on the... There we go, so that's our fixture that we're building at the moment. Deck it, clear it, finish it, edge break it, chamfer it, drill the last holes. Um, then I think that looks like all of it. Yeah, there we go. So that's some adaptive. Looks like we'll be doing two at once for this one here. Don't need two, we can just run one. But this is very exciting. I'm looking forward to seeing Zane uh, print out some of these files and, and go from there. So let's jump across onto the machine. Let's load it up. We've already got a fixture plate set up on there now. Um, let's make a mess. Right, we're over here at the machine. Before we get stuck in cutting, I'm just going to explain some of this, uh, the features that we've put on here, such as the big one. You would notice that we've just put in a little bit of an air blast uh, setup into this. We're just worried that with some of the deeper pockets, we're not going to get the chip evacuation quite as much as what we were hoping. So we're just going to hedge our bets a little bit and add some air. Now, we've made a little fixture plate. We've got the pit bull um, talon rail on this side. We have our knife edge pit bull on this side, which you'll see close ups shortly. And we've also, a little sneaky trick that we've been doing is adding in a dowel pin into these positions. So it means that we can actually slide the stock in hard up against that hard stock. And then we can just pull the dowel pin out before we start machining. And then that means we've got the stock located pretty well exactly. And we don't have to probe it in every time we go to put in a new bit of stock. We have our Op2 jig sitting here. Uh, we're just going to see how it goes. We think we might have got some infill settings wrong on the print. So we'll check that out. Um, we also have our Z probe. Now our Z probe here is for tool setting. It is an electrical contact, but it does have a bit of a spring tension in there to make up for it. The grid, we have put in a grid in the same form factor as a Saunders Machine Works half inch mod vise. Now, while we're not using the mod vices directly, it just means that when we go in to start putting the mod vices on, we've got, uh, we're not going to nest any screws and bolts underneath um, where we may need them. So we've bored all these out, we've counterboard them, and we've put in these furniture nut certs into it, which means we can move them around, we can do what we need to do, and sturdy as hell. So what we're going to do now is we're going to set up our 3D edge finder. We're going to program in and set up all these work coordinate systems into the machine. Then we'll touch off our tooling, make sure it all lines up, double check it, and we'll make some chips.
We made something, a mess and some broken bits, but we did get there in the end. So we were trying out that 3D printed fixture and it worked really well the first time. In fact, it broke a tool. And then it decided to let go. So I think we can sum up that 3D prints work really well up until the point that they don't. Um, so ejecto parto it it broke um so we quickly whipped one out out of aluminium and we have some magic so a few learnings few improvements, few tweaks. The servo motors that we're using, we haven't tuned them quite right. So we've got a little bit of a wave going on where they're hunting. So we're gonna have a little bit more of a fiddle about that. We've got some, um, some chatter lines and we think that's because the MDF bed is actually vibrating up and down. So we're going to make that a little bit more rigid. Um, the single flute chip X cutter that we were using turns out um, it was an old one and it was quite dull so we swapped to the three flute swift carb and we got some really nice finishes so you can actually see if i hold this up again that we got a really good floor finish on that one so we're looking to repeat this we're probably going to make a couple more of these to to dial it in and really get it get it nice but oh man really chuffed with the results so far this is this is a great start first ever part out of aluminium on the discovery like, how cool is this? In the next video, we're going to have completed the remaining rocket pots. We will have hopefully got the time down from six hours of rocket pot down to something a little bit more uh, economical and a little bit uh, less hair pulling. And then we'll move on and uh, we'll make some rocket cover lids. We're gonna make them out of brass and we might engrave our logo on it. And if we've got some time, we might try something a little cool. Don't forget, like and subscribe. If you haven't seen the first one, make sure you go back and see that. And we'll see you next time. Pub. So you get me working away. I'm not sure if you're still recording or. Oh. It's alright, I'm walking away.